It worked. See, if you don't make live videos, you don't understand the the stress. But anyway, um, so it's working. And the title of this video is how many books, uh, well, how many books in FBA inventory <clears throat> do you need for daily sales? So this is something that someone asked uh, a, what, a viewer watched or pfft, a, a viewer asked in a comment. I responded, but I thought I'd make a video about it as well because it's it's important and there's always new sellers coming in. Um, I started four years ago, but uh, it's I guess it's crazy it's crazy to me to think that there's still new people coming in and um, giving Amazon a shot with books. But uh, just considering how much it has changed in the last four years, especially the last couple years, two years with the increased fees and basically Amazon letting resellers, um, book resellers know that they're not interested in slow moving items. If it's going to sit for a long time, uh, over six months or a year, you're going to get hit with a lot of fees. Um, so, you know, you better have some money in that book, uh, once it sells. So, um, almost a minute and a half in, no one's here yet. Uh, but that's okay. So how many books? Um, so there's no magic number, unfortunately, but I will say that um, to have daily sales, no, Papa, okay. To have daily sales, um, you probably need, again, this is not set in stone. You don't necessarily need this many, but um, you, I would say shoot for about 300 to 500 to get daily sales. Um, now, <laughs> if you have a 10% monthly sell-through rate and you have 300 items um, on average in your inventory every month, you're going to get a, a, a sale a day. Um, if you have 20%, then you would only need a sell-through rate, then you would only need 150 items. Um, so uh, you don't know when you first start what your sell-through rate is going to be. So that's not exactly a way to figure out how many books you need. But what I'm saying is it is important though, once you've been doing it for a little while, as in like a few months, three, four months, and you're starting to see sales, you want to keep track of how your inventory, where your inventory level is and how many sales you're getting. By the way, two and a half minutes in, there's still no live viewers. So I'm just talking to you future viewers. Um, hopefully some people will join eventually. Uh, so I would say about 300 to 500. I mean, uh, you could have 100, 150 and getting and already start getting daily sales because it really depends on the kinds of inventory, or the kinds of books you are sending in. Uh, and again, this is it's frustrating if you're watching this, if you're a new seller and you click on this video and you say, oh, yeah, I want to know how many exactly how many books. And I say, well, it depends. Well, I don't know exactly because it's frustrating because because if you're new and you've sent in two, 300 books and you're only seeing a few sales a week, you know, every other day, a couple of sales this day, no sales the next few days, et cetera, then it can be frustrating. Um, but to average a sale a day, um, I would say shoot for about three to 500 in an in inventory. Uh, like I said, if you have, I would shoot for 20% plus a month and sell through rate is really good for books. Uh, unless you have a, a big inventory of slow moving long tail books. Um, so I want to make sure that this is, this video is public, right? I don't know. It says it's live. Um, so it's, I don't think I've ever seen this happen where it's four minutes in, um, since I've been doing live videos and no one is on, but anyway, um, so I'll get back to it. Uh, so it depends, you know, if you, if you have, if you're sending in a lot of stuff that is the ranks are for books now are over a million, um, then those are going to take on average longer to sell. Um, if you're sending in stuff that's under half a million rank uh, or around there consistently, it's going to sell a little quicker, but it's still going to be pretty slow. All right. Our first viewer, four and a half minutes in. Awesome. Um, uh, but if you're sending an item or books that are faster sellers that have much lower rank, like let's say hundred thousand or less or much, a much lower then um, you're going to see 
you should see faster sales. Of course, this is why it always depends because just because a book is ranked 80,000 or has an average rank of 80,000 doesn't mean that you're going to sell that your copy immediately because there's so many other factors, right? There's the, the price that you set it. There's the competition. Um, the competition that you're going up against, are they? do they have repricers that are set to, to refresh every minute or every second or whatever it is uh, and to undercut by a penny um, or more? Because chances are then that you're going to, um, you know, it might take a little bit longer than you think to sell your item. So it just depends on a lot of factors. But um, I recommend if you're starting out that you have a good mixture of uh uh, fast, medium, and long tail books. Uh, unless, of course, you prefer only long tail or only fast selling books, because it really depends on your temperament and how much pace, patience you have or do not have. If you are, uh, if you're like me and you don't like to wait that long to see sales, and I found this out um, when I first started, then you want to send in quicker selling books. Unfortunately, a lot of the quicker selling books have lower profit in general, not always, but in general. Um, so the profit's not going to be as good. That's why I recommend getting a mixture of books that are, are going to sell for, you know, some that are selling for $12 to $15 and then some that are selling 15 to 20 and then a good amount that are selling for over $20 and much higher uh, so that you can have that diverse inventory, a book inventory when it comes to price. And then that also... Um, you know, has to do not always, but has to do with the sales rank and, and the velocity of the sales or rather the sales history and how often those books are going to be selling. So that's what I recommend, you know, uh, when you first start and, and in, in general, I mean, if you've been doing it for a while, um, some people prefer the faster selling stuff, but if I can, if I feel confident that I can send in a book that's selling for like 12 bucks, and I can make, you know, I don't know, four or five dollars off of it, depending. Um, and I got it for really cheap uh, profit, you know, four or five bucks profit after everything, after sending the book in and paying for inbound shipping, the cost of goods um, uh, and, and storing it. Well, storing it is not going to be that expensive. But um, then uh, what was my point? Th then, you know, I'm fine to do that. But, um, you know, you, you got to kind of set what your profits are or your minimum profit is. So <clears throat> I recommend focus on building, looking at my notes here, focus on building uh, an inventory of profitable books. Of course, that's based upon, you know, what your profit level is um, or basic profit level. So set a minimum profit per book that will sell before, the, before six months, ideally, unless they are selling for uh, 20 plus dollars. Um, I say $20, you know, you could make it higher. Um, you can make it 25, 30, 40, whatever. Everyone's different. People have access to different types of books. So um, it depends on, on your situation. But I would say at least 20 bucks. If you sell a book, an average book that's not too huge, not too heavy, um, not too too large or, or heavy, uh, $20 book, you know, you depending on the size and shape of it, um, if it's an average paperback uh, or a, a thin, lighter, hardback you know, probably going to make around 10, 11 bucks or so profit and then deduct whatever you spend on the book. So let's say on average 10 bucks off a $20 book. So if it sits there for four or five months, um, that's still good profit, right? I mean, what are you, what are you spending a month on a book? It used to be, oh, a penny a book. Um, and it's still pretty low to the storage fees, the monthly ongoing storage fees before you hit six month long-term storage fees. Then of course, 12 months. So that's why I say, um, if it's going to go over six months, if it goes to seven, eight, nine months, uh, and the book's going to sell for $20, $21, something around there, um, then it's probably still worth it. But then once you start inching up and you're getting closer to 12 months, you're going to want to have a, a book. You want to get rid of that book, or it's going to have to be a book that is just uh, the prices don't dip below a really high price, $50, $80. And there's many, many, many books like that. They're harder to find, but... Um, you have to get good at finding those types of books. There's book. Those are the kind of books that fall in the category of there can be fiction books, but a lot of them are nonfiction. And it's a book that is fairly rare. Um, but yet there's a steady demand for it and people are willing to pay good money for it. There was a book that I found months ago or not found, but I heard about and I looked it up on Amazon 
and it's it always goes for like 75 80 bucks um because it's a it's a book that didn't have very many copies made but yet hold on one second it didn't have very many copies made but um i mean i don't know exactly how many but only enough to have you know maybe half a dozen or so offers on amazon <laughs> and people um but yet there's a demand you know it, no, Papa. No, déjalo allá. Come on, go. No, no, no. Um, but yet, uh, what is my? So there's a steady demand. So I don't remember exactly how many sales it was getting, but you know there was at least a couple a month, maybe even just one or two a month. If the book's going for 70, 80 bucks or more, and it always stays at that price, unless some random person decides to just drop it, then. Um, Hold on. Um, so those kind of books are out there. They're just harder to find. But if you can have a good chunk of those, then clearly it's okay to have your book sit around for a while. Um, after the six month, uh, long-term storage fee hits, but by and large, you're going to want to sell most of your books less than six months, I would say. Um, so um, what do you call it? Sorry, losing my train of thought. So yeah, so so set a minimum profit. So you, you can either set a minimum price or a minimum profit um, of a book you're willing to send in Again, if the profit is only like five bucks uh, and it's and it's not ranked very low, which means it could potentially take a lot longer to sell, it's probably not worth it to send it in. Um, maybe do merchant fulfilled instead. Um, I'm a big fan of, of diversifying into merchant fulfilled, even if you don't have a lot of space, even if you only have a bookshelf um, or bookcase, even if you can store a hundred or a couple hundred books, it's still probably worth it. Um, of course, if you're just cherry picking um, and you don't even want to hassle with, um, uh, hold on. And you don't even want to hassle with storing and shipping and all that, that's fine, but uh, I recommend it as a way to diversify. So you want to get better um, One second, guys. Hey, Terry, how you doing? Um, Ryder asked me, uh, would you do a drastic price slash to get books or CDs cleared out um, before the fees hit or just have them destroyed? Um, So, um, depends, depends on how much, hold on, hold on. Um, so yeah, uh, what do you call it? Yeah, I cannot focus. I'm gonna have to cut the video if, if they keep it up, but, um, uh, sorry. So, uh, would you do a, a drastic price slash to get books or CDs cleared out before the fees hit or just have them destroyed? Um, so it depends. So I would say, um, you want to do some repricing before the 
before, if you're going to get hit with one of the long-term storage fees on some of that stuff, you want to start repricing. Hello. Uh, and um, like at least, you know, a lot, a lot of time before. So I would say, you know, a month before, give your, give yourself a couple weeks before, at least don't wait the week of, um, try to reprice a lot of that stuff and get it out. Um, so draft, you know, slight slash some of the prices, especially if it's been sitting there for, for five, six months. Um, maybe, you know, if you've already gone through one month of long-term storage fees. Um, but I would say if you have whatever they are, they're coming up to the first six months and you got 50 items, let's say, um, you got to take a look at all those and see if there's realistically enough profit there. That's why I would drop the prices first. If they don't sell, you'll be surprised. You can sell if you have 50 or hundred items that are going to hit with the long-term storage fee. If you go back and you drastically reprice them, a fire sale, um, you can probably sell a good percentage. You're not going to, you're probably not going to sell all of them, <laughs> but out of a hundred, if you could sell even like 30%, 40%, and maybe that's too high, but even 20% um, and then get rid of the rest of them because it just doesn't make sense. Um, you know, so the, the six month storage fee is not too, too awful, but, oh, uh, one sec. Um, it's not, it's not too awful. So if you can withstand one or two of those and you feel there's still enough profit in there to stick with whatever price it's at. Um, then, then it could be worth it to keep it around. But I would say by and large, you want to drop the prices. So he says, even if it severely undercuts other FBA sellers. So if you're trying to get rid of it, then yeah, unfortunately you've got to drop that price. Um, that's why I say to reprice ahead of time. If you have a repricer, then you're already doing it. But, um, there's a reason why an item doesn't sell within six months. Unless it's, like I said, unless it's a genuine long tail item where there's a lot of money in there, uh, you only spend a dollar or two and it's legitimately going to be selling for, you know, 30, 40, $50 or more then um, then uh, what do you call it? Sorry guys, losing my train of thought. Um, just lost my train of thought. But um, if it's, yeah, I totally forgot. So anyway, uh, oh, if it undercuts. So I would undercut if, yeah, if it's been, if it hasn't sold within five months and it's approaching six months, there's a reason why it hasn't sold. The prices, I mean, whatever, you know, maybe the item just less demand, more offers, um, whatever it may be, other people undercutting you. So now it's time for you to undercut them. So I would say yes. Robert says he matches the merchant fulfilled uh, price at five months. Yeah, I mean, I don't see a reason to have them sent back to you unless unless you can turn around and sell it merchant fulfilled or sell it on eBay or wherever. Uh, if you feel you can make money off of it, because you're going to have to spend fifty cents. I mean, a hundred items um, to get it disposed to get a hundred items disposed of is only fifteen dollars. So versus fifty dollars, if you get it sent back to you, that's a big difference. Excuse me. Jensen books are notorious for what? For undercutting? They are for sure. Excuse me. Um, yeah. So so yeah. I would I would just um, yeah. I mean, as a so you can see your fees on the seller central. You can see what the fees are going to be and. I mean, if you go below the fees, then you're going to owe Amazon money. So just make sure you're at least going to break even or make, you know, a nickel or a dime or a quarter or something um, so that you don't have to pay Amazon money to sell that item. Uh, you might as well just dispose of it. But yeah, um, I mean, you can. Uh, yeah, that's what I do. Um, I, I try to reprice like I'm repricing. uh well, I started repricing right now because my sales have been really slow in October, but that's another conversation. Uh, yeah. 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 I mean, Jensen books has been doing it for years and years and years before I was even selling on Amazon. But ever since I've been selling on Amazon, Jensen's not the only one, but I even see them. I see them a lot on CDs as well. Um, not as much, but sometimes, and they, 
yeah, they 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 have really low FBA prices in general, but. Terry says, I automatically dispose the low price books and hold the expensive ones as long as it takes. Yeah, I agree, which is why it's important to continue to replenish your inventory as often as you can, whether you're doing it by yourself or you have somebody helping you out or people helping you out. But if you're a one person show, then you just got to be consistent about um, whatever your sources are, you know, hitting your sources and shipping. I mean, that's what I was going to say. Um yeah, get better at sourcing. So, um, yeah, as advice to a new seller, and there's a lot of old, older sellers here, but, um, you know, I would say as a new person, newer person starting out, give yourself at least six months of consistent weekly sourcing and shipments uh, and pay attention to what is selling and what is not selling. And, of course, reprice. Um, if you're doing it manually, then at least, you know, do it once in a while. Do it every, every week or so, uh, especially because you're going to have a small inventory. It's important to, uh, you know, when your books hit, the time between when you scan a book, then go home and list it, and then ship it, and then it finally goes live, however long that takes, depending upon what warehouse you get or warehouses you get, um, the prices are more than likely going to change. So you're probably going to have to go in there and, and, and manually reprice. I mean, if you don't have a repricer, if you have a repricer, then it'll do it for you. But um, you're probably going to want to reprice. I'm going back through newer stuff that I sent in. Uh, like a month ago uh, that hasn't sold yet and I'm repricing, uh, especially books. There's just so much more competition with books um, than CDs. So it happens very often to where I, I send a book in and then I go back and there's five pe five FBA sellers who are lower than my price. Not really making any sense to me, but they are. Um, Jamie says, I got a question. Had my first return earlier, 28 bucks. But I still don't have a reason. Any insight on this? Uh, sorry, one second, Jamie. So Robert says, according to SellerRatings.com, which I did not, I've never heard of before, um, Jensen Books is the 178th largest third-party seller on Amazon. I think they would be bigger, but I guess that's all categories, right? Um, not just uh, not just books, but that would make sense. But um, I wonder within books and CDs or media in general if they're much higher. Um, yeah, they're they're a big. I mean, just look at how many um, how many feedback ratings they have. They have hundreds of thousands. I can't remember exactly. There's uh, Thrift Books that I think has over a million. I think they're the largest. I mean, in terms of feedback ratings that I've ever seen. Um, when it comes to CDs, there's there's Declutter, and they have their other account. They have two accounts, one in the UK and one in the US. The Declutter one has several hundred thousand, and the other one has even more, I believe, in the UK. Um, Clean Earth Books, yeah. yeah. I'll have to take a look at that, seller, sellerratings.com. Um, I'd be curious to see that. But yeah, so, and then you'll see Goodwill. Oh, Better World Books has over two million, okay. Um, uh yeah, Goodwill has, I mean, combined, Goodwill probably has the most. <laughs> um, because they have ones, they'll have Goodwill, you know, and they'll have a city next to it, you know, whatever. Number five, the clutter is number five. Wow. Now, is that, that's all sellers? Or that's just within media? Because that's crazy. Wow, they're way bigger than, uh, than Jensen then. Oh, all sellers. Wow. That's crazy. They are huge. And they're, um, yeah, they're, they're merchant fulfilled. So I wonder where they have their, their warehouses. Well, I guess you send the stuff to Atlanta. So it's probably not Atlanta. No, 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 no. I'm like, no, <laughs> I only have 400 in almost 50 ratings now. So, and I've been doing it for four years. So yeah, the day that I hit a thousand will be uh, that'll be exciting. <laughs> um, oh, so what did Jamie ask? He says he got a uh, first return, twenty eight bucks, but I still don't have a reason. So Jamie, did you call seller support about it? Did you ask them what the reason was, and they didn't tell you? Um, 
your first return, yeah, it's going to happen. I mean, the larger inventory grows, you're going to get returns. It's going to be a very small percentage. I mean, it should be, assuming you're sending in quality stuff and the condition that you assign to it matches the book's condition, then you shouldn't have very many returns. Things are going to happen. People are, for whatever reason, going to decide they don't want the book. Um, some people are just super picky, but that's a small, small percentage. Um, if it's just, you know, if it's not, unless it's like a super special, unique type of book. Um, right. Not all seller. Yeah. No, for sure. There's, there's, I'm sure there's a lot of sellers, um, small and large that, and in between that aren't that honest about, well, I know for sure that aren't that honest, especially a lot of merchant fulfilled sellers aren't honest about the conditions of the books when they list them. Um, no, let me look at that. Going to seller ratings right now. Discover Amazon Marketplace sellers. Oh, do they? Oh, you have to search. Top rated sellers. Oh, no. Sorry, guys. I'm listening to my daughter cry because she hit herself. Um, oh, so he says, what do I mean by the video's question? Oh, so, you know, how many books do you need to have daily sales? How many, what does your inventory level need to be for books? That's basically it. And there's no, I started out the, the video talking about that there's no specific number because it depends on, um, it's, it, it depends on the types of books you're sending in. Um, like when I started to have daily sales, I would probably say like, cause I, I was terrible at the books. I was, I mean, I was really bad about sourcing. I didn't know what I was doing. It took me a long time to figure it out. Um, I probably needed like 500 or so before probably more to be honest, but it took me like a long time before uh, I really figured it out. Uh, I got better at, at my inventory. And even it really took till the fees went up and I was forced to get better uh, about what I sent in and not just sending in. Uh, yeah. um, so it totally depends. But but I, I would recommend that if somebody's new, um, yeah, it's going to take time when you first start out. You're not going to understand all the data even if you have like FBA scan or one of the good scanning apps and you're not using Amazon uh, free Amazon app, which I was using in the beginning, which is also a big reason why, I mean, I was sending in books that were ranked in the like four, three, four, five millions thinking, just not getting it right. Not getting, thinking that those were going to sell because, Oh, look, I, I only spent 50 cents or a dollar on this book and look, it's going for $20, but it's ranked five and a half million. And I didn't understand the concept of average sales rank over a certain period of time of Keepa or Camel, 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 and having access to that type of stuff and knowing what to look up and how to find it and, and how to apply it to the book that I had in front of me. I didn't know any of that stuff when I started in 2014. And then 15, I started to slowly learn. By 2016, I had gotten a lot better and I was getting consistent sales, but my inventory was much larger um, it went up to over 2,000, over 2,500, up to 2,700 at one point. Um, but a lot of that stuff did not need to be sent in. My sell-through rate was really low. So I'm a, I'm a big fan of lean and mean. If you can have uh, a 500, 600, you know, 1,000 uh, book inventory, which is relatively small, um, or even under 500, and it, you can have a good sell-through rate, um, if you're selling, if you're sending in stuff, that's really going to sell for the price that you want it, uh, to sell. So anyway, so that was kind of the point of the video. Cause someone had asked about, about that in a, a comment. So 
Steve Rakin's mom, Mama Profits, makes about 3000 per month while averaging only about three to 400 book books and in inventory per month, as I do. No need to build a huge... No, no, no. You don't need to have a big inventory. Um, if you can have... No, I would recommend... Well, I'd recommend a big inventory and a, and a huge average sale price. If you can have a $40 average sale price and have 3,000 items, why not? Versus having 300 items and a $40 average sale price. Why not do both, right? If you have access to that many high-priced or valuable books. But most people don't. Um, unless you have like, all you do is go to colleges and you know, a hundred different professors and they're more than happy to only sell you their most valuable textbooks, um, or whatever the situation may be, then, you know, it's more likely that you're going to have a smaller inventory, um, or have to build a larger one and diversify it with more, um, uh, more, what do you call it? Um, you're gonna have to diversify it with with uh, lower, medium, and, and higher priced items, basically. And ones that sell quicker take a little longer, and ones that take a, even longer. Uh, Steve asked, "Well, anyway, but yeah, so totally." Steve Rakin's mom making three thousand a month. That's that's her profit, or that's what her sales are. That's another key, right? You can. Say, oh, I, I made three thousand dollars, but was that your sales or was that um, what the profit was? Have you received an inauthentic claim for something you don't have an invoice for? No. One time, someone claimed that a CD was not the right. Probably sales. Yeah. Yeah. So, one time. Anyway, one time, Steve, I I got a, a mess or. Or somebody left. It was somebody that bought a CD and claimed that it it didn't uh, have a track on it, or you know, was the was it an authentic CD or whatever? That's the only time, and that was nonsense. Um, so yeah, gross sales probably. I mean, three thousand per month gross is great. Don't get me wrong, but um, you know, the fees are are pretty high with FBA, and and then you got to consider that. Um, uh, so fees, first of all. So if you make $3,000, then Amazon's going to take almost half of that, depending. Maybe they'll take less than half because you're selling a higher average sale price. If your average, if your average sale price is 25 versus versus 12, then you're going to get more money. Right. 1K per month net with a $15 average sale price. Right. No, for sure. Um, yeah, yeah. It depends. I mean, three. That that's... That, <laughs> A lot of the not just YouTube video titles and and you know I don't know courses or whatever, but a lot of the YouTube videos you'll see five thousand dollars a month selling books, you know, part time or whatever. Well, yeah, even if you're grossing five thousand dollars and you have eight hundred items in inventory, whatever you're sending in a couple or a hundred or so a week, I don't know. Whatever the situation is, just keep it in mind that if you see those big numbers, that usually it is gross. It's not. They don't say five thousand dollars pure profit selling books, you know, a month selling books on Amazon FBA or, or whatever. I mean, if you're making five thousand profit, then your sales are probably like, you know, eight, nine, ten thousand dollars or, or whatever it may be, or maybe more. Um, yeah. So, so take it with a grain of salt. Um, those type of things that, that people put out there. And, but you know, Hey, $3,000 gross is awesome. Doing it part-time, not having to work that hard at it. I mean, if you're making after everything, you're making, you know, 1500, 1200, whatever, if that's what you need, then great. Uh, if you need more money, then you got to sell more, um, send more books in. That's the bottom line. Everyone's situation is different. Oh, she's retired. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know all the backstory, but yeah, for for a retired person, um, assuming that they're getting money, Social Security, retirement, pension, whatever it is, um, yeah, an extra grand, fifteen hundred, whatever her profit is, is awesome. Oh, okay, no problem, Jamie. Um, yeah, you should call for sure. Uh, 
It happens. You'll get returns. If you're new, Jamie, then it's going to happen. You, the more books you send in, the more you sell. You go from selling a couple hundred to selling, you know, thousands of books. You're going to get returns, especially if you're going to sell um, back to, or school books. It's going to happen. Don't worry about it. As long as you're being honest about the books you're sending in and the condition that they're in, then you shouldn't have a problem. Well, yeah, take a look at your account or call. Right. Yeah. So, um, so I think I got to go, guys. Let's see. Um, so hopefully, so hopefully this helped out. I mean, somebody's watching this who's pretty new. Um, again, there's not a specific number. Um, you know, a, a lot of the people on here that have been doing this for a while know that there's not a specific number that you hit. I mean, once you've been doing it for a while, you know, with your business, your particular inventory, how um, many books you need to have to make X amount of sales, to make X amount of profit, that type of thing. You, you know, you, you should know your numbers, but everybody's different. You know, people live in different cities, different states, different regions. Everyone has access to different types of books, whether bulk like Robert and myself or you're doing strictly um, thrift stores and and garage sales and estate sales and that type of stuff. Steve says, I just received my first inauthentic claim for an item I don't have an advice for. Was it a book or would this is something, a different type of item? What type of item was it? I haven't received, I haven't had to deal with that, but um, you usually don't see that with, with with media. Is it like an electronic item or or something else like that? If anyone has any advice for um oh clothing item. Oh, they're saying it was like a, a copied uh, piece of clothing from TJ Maxx. That's weird. Um wait, so you bought it from TJ Maxx? You do not have the the well, the receipt. If, I mean, hmm, I'm not familiar with that. I mean, if somebody can chime in and help them out, that'd be great. But I haven't had to deal with that. I would, um, I mean, you're probably going to have to call Seller Central and, and tell them the deal and say that I I bought this item, uh, whoops, you know, wherever you bought it. Um, I don't know. You may or may not have an actual, I mean, invoice and a receipt are different, clearly. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't itemize, yeah. It's the problem people have had with books sometimes, you know? It's like, well, the you call and the, and the person on the phone is like, well, do you have an invoice or, you know, do you have a wholesale supplier? And it's like, no, I went to a thrift store. I went to this store, this this sale, this garage sale, this estate sale, and that's where I bought it. I don't either don't have a receipt or the receipt doesn't itemize it. Um. I don't know, unfortunately, Steve. Uh, I don't have a definitive answer, but I would say call Hello Central, get as much information as you can. Be honest with them. Um, tell them you have a receipt, but it doesn't itemize because that's how you buy the stuff that you resell on Amazon. Hopefully, I mean, hopefully they'll decide with you. I don't know. Good luck because I haven't dealt with that, fortunately. I mean, usually with media stuff, um, unless... There's a possibility it could be like uh, a DVD, which I don't sell on Amazon, that can be considered inauthentic. But usually, you know, you don't get that for a book or a CD um, or a record or anything like that. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, no problem. Good luck with that. But, um, yeah, so I, I hope it, get, it gets worked out because that's that would suck for your account. That would be bad. Um yeah, so thanks for tuning in, guys. I think I'm going to head out and go see what's going on with my daughter. Sound like she was wailing, which usually happens. Um, <laughs> so thanks for watching, guys. I'll make another video tomorrow. And uh, hopefully you had some good uh, finds today and, and um, got some things done with your business. And I'll talk to you tomorrow. Keep booking.